Hi, this is Linda Amon, Amon Arts. Welcome to my world. And during this time of isolation because of COVID-19, I am going to do a painting that will be um, something I want to do for this, remembering this time. So it's going to be about what do I love and the emotions that I want to bring out in this time. So the things that I love in paintings are the look of nature, circles, lines, quite a bit of line with pen, uh, movement, texture, words. I like words that um, mean things to me and also asthmatic words, which are actually, you can't distinguish them as actual words. So you can look that up. And emotions, I want to have, I have a series I'm doing right now called The Breath of Fresh Air. And I want this painting to be soothing, peaceful, happy, with mindfulness, calming. I want it to be the kind of thing that I'm going to feel that would kind of break up the um, this time in our history. So I'm going to be using different colors than I usually use. I'm actually going to play with, I'm going to just test them here for a minute. This is a very bright, now it doesn't seem very calming, but you'll see, I'm going to move my paper out of the way for a second. You're going to see that when I do this and mix other colors in, how I can have that be the little warm and hot spot. Now I'm going to do a little bit of azo yellow, and I'm going to let that kind of ooze in a little bit for a thought. I want it to be happy. I'm going to use a little bit of quinacridone rust, and when I use the quinacridone rust, that could be kind of desaturating that orange a little bit. You can kind of see how that's changing the look of that, and it can also be brought over here a little bit. Then, using the color wheel, you can see that right now I'm doing analogous colors. So I'm kind of working between the yellows to the reddish oranges with a little bit of a mix in here making it brown. And I want to pop over to the other side and just have a, a complementary color from the other side uh, against the oranges reds of kind of turquoise or kind of blue tones. So I'm going to pick a little bit of a, a bright blue and this one happens to be my phthalo blue and of course if I run it into my orange that's a complementary color so it's going to turn out kind of a neutral so that would give me some neutrals and then if I just put water here and drag it down you're gonna see I could have some pretty nice blendings and mixtures so that's just the way that I'm coming up with a color palette doesn't mean that I'm going to stick to those ideas, but they make me happy. So I'm going to look at my list again and see if those follow my plan. So a breath of fresh air. I feel that this could give excitement of spring and the blue and it will just make me feel like it's outside. Soothing. Um, these colors are exciting, but we're going to desaturate and bring them down. So here, if you look at this area, look how those are soothing colors. And then I want it peaceful, calm, happy, and mindful of, of the way that I'm going about this. So I'm going to be just playing on a big piece of paper with my plan in mind. I can change this as it goes, as I feel I want to. But I'm going to just start with some different movements on the paper to get myself started. So I'm going to take um, some found things in my house. So this is actually just a pot holder. And I'm going to take my, um, I think I'll go with my quinacridone rust and just take my brush and pull across it. This is watercolor, remember, so it's not going to like stamp evenly. It's going to be kind of juicy. And where the holes fill up in this kind of honeycomb look, it'll leave a little blop. And I'm okay with that. So I'm just going to come across. I'm going to get a little thicker on my brush so that I will get a little more top of this. And it's going to be very random. So I'm going to flip it over so upside down. I'm going to angle it so that I don't have to have anything perfect. And I'm going to press it down. Ooh, this could be fun. And then I'm going to re-stamp it so that it doesn't stay square. And I'm not pushing it equally. So now you can see the square of the pot holder doesn't look like a square. I'm going to ghost it over here, which means that when the paint is very, you know, I keep stamping, stamping, stamping it with the watercolor across, and it will give just a very light ghosted look. Do you see that? It's just very light. And because this is watercolor, it'll wash off later if I want to. If it was acrylic or any other kind of medium, I'd want to wash it immediately. But I can do that. 
So then I'm going to take just a piece of corrugated cardboard and I'm going to take a little bit of my azo yellow and just draw across it. And I'm using the brush with the belly of it sideways so I'm not getting inside the little cracks. And then I'm just going to come and vertically come through. And again, just have some fun. Oh, it picked up some of the brown too. That's cool because it was still a little bit wet. So you can see I've got a little bit of yellow in there and then I can set that aside. Then um, I'm going to take a piece of torn paper, just regular paper, and I'm going to lay it down. And I think this one I will just take um, a little uh, stencil. This stencil happens to be one that was my mom's and it is, uh, I remember it as a little girl. So that makes me happy. And I'm just going to come and take off the edge of my paper so that it's working like a mask and when I pull this color across it will be the shape of that torn edge and I can move it but you can see it's kind of neat to do this and you can change the value and how far you come up on it but I just want to have some varied line in there see that? I'm going to come back here and do, I'm going to pick up my brush and I didn't clean my brush and I dripped it into the azo yellow so now it's got a green tone to it by just the mix of that. Okay. And you can move it all different ways and see what you get. Alright, because again I'm, I'm playing with what, what can I do today? Alright, so the next thing I'm going to do is use another stencil because I'm kind of in the stenciling mood I guess. This is a little one like this. And if you don't have that, remember, you can go through your house and have found items. You don't have to worry about going out and buying stencils. If I use a stencil, I generally use it pretty um, randomly so it doesn't look like, hi, I'm, I'm the stencil. So I'm going to take a little bit of that hot pyro, um, scarlet pyro, and come in and just I'm going to do different angles on this. I'm getting a lot of design right off the front. This will be interesting. But I again am layering. I love layers. So if I layer over what's already been existing there at different angles, then it gives a little more interest. And you can see sometimes I go back and get more paint and sometimes I use what's there. Because it's a little bit damp on the paper yet, I'm getting mixtures of colors. Okay, all right, so I've got a lot going on now. So the next thing I will do is I will let this dry, and then I will come over with some glazes so that that design just kind of goes down, um, and it's going to be kind of an under layer. And I don't know which way is up yet, but I'm not concerned about that. The other thing is I can always take a portion of this because it's on a Arches 140 cold press paper. I can take a portion of it and do something with it at another time. So um, I think I'm going to leave it at that, although um, I've, I've got some... I love line, so I think I'm going to take a little bit of... I've got these they're called Stabilo and they're called Woodies. They're really pretty cool and I've been using those a little bit. So I'm going to stay in my color palette. I'm going to take a little bit of blue and I think I'm just going to do a little bit of line through here so that it again breaks up being too concerned about things and just these beautiful lines through. And I have that and then I could um, emulsify, oops, emulsify them just a little bit with um, water because they are a water base and then leave some of them. So I'm going to come through and just touch some areas so that they emulsify and get a little bit more blended and some of them will be plain. Alright, so I'm going to let that dry and then I'll start doing some glazes. So I came back after things were dry, kind of moved different directions and it's not uncommon that when I'm working on these kind of um, mindful uh, paintings and experiments, I actually find that sometimes I have birds or different animals through. And I, for me, I see this dove 
this little face of a dove and the wing coming out. So I decided I'm going to emphasize that. So I took a white uh, clear lid and laid around it to see, because I told you I like circles. I thought, well, that's not a big enough circle, but I didn't have a clear lid that was big enough. So I just took my plastic lid, cut it so that I've got a bigger one so that I can lay the circle down to see what the shape would be. And I think I'm going to uh, draw a circle around this section of my my painting. And then I can kind of do what I want with that. I might leave it as a dove or I might change it, but I think I'm going to do it about like that. So I'm just going to draw a circle. And because this is uh, a you know pretty perfect circle, I don't have to measure or anything. I can just kind of come around and draw a pencil line in there. Whoops. Of course, I picked it up a little too soon. So then my pencil went out. But I can erase that. So I've got that circle there. Erase the line that I fell into. So what I'm going to do with this area is I'm going to emphasize this area that I like the dove. And I'm just going to take my yellow because I think that would be a almost like a, it might be like the the dove and then a sun. And so that might be kind of nice. So I'm going to take the azo yellow and just do a nice glaze. Now the glaze over the orange will be fine because it will just be a yellow, yellow orange. And of course my color theory tells me that when I go over the blue, it's just going to make it a little bit green. So we're not in any trouble with that. If we had purple under here, it would become a neutral, which might just be fine, but we've got um, colors that are going to work very blended very well. And these are just things to play with. And I will probably do some line work around that circle because I will emphasize it more. And I'm being very thoughtful not to press too many times over that blue line because it would move on me. So now I've got some emphasis in an area, you know, and then I'm going to take a little bit of my uh, Scarlet Pyrrole and just give a little bit of color to the base so that's not all one color. It gives a little bit of weight down there. I'm going to just add a little bit of water so that it just blends a little bit. I'm going to rock and roll it a bit. And again, that feels exciting and yet peaceful at the same time. So um, as that is drying, I'm going to kind of reassess the thinking around some of this other work. Um, and I can change my mind as many times as I want. I think I will take and do um, a little bit of a blue tone, because I'm staying kind of in some of my colors. And I will just very lightly come beneath this sphere and it will be a little bit neutralized because it's going over some orangish colors and your orange and blue are complementary colors but I'm just going to very lightly and then go off to nothingness down here so it's just a, a blend of color down at the base so I'm kind of getting rid of the white of the paper down in there is what I'm doing it just gave it a little bit of a tone I'm going to do a little bit more watercolor always lightens up so I'm going to add just a little bit more color so that when it lightens up it's not quite so light. And I see that here we've got some of that orange that came down in so I'm just going to blend it down in. And I like that color. I think I'm going to take what's on my brush which is kind of a little bit of mixture of the blue with a little bit of the orange in my, you know, picking up from the rust underneath. So we got a little bit of varied. I'm going to come back up here with a little bit of a yellow, and when it gets into the green, to the uh, yellow and the blue, it makes it a little bit green. And just come over and get a little bit of that paper toned. Okay. So now we're having some different looks. We're going to get some of that settled down later. But a lot of times on these, sometimes I just go 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 on them, and other times I want to contemplate and and think about the decisions. On this one, I want to take a little time for this to dry. That'll give me some ponder time, and I can think about other ideas. But I am going to take the um, woody and just emphasize some of that line that 
I moved out a little bit and maybe make this more actually of a dove by just giving it a tiny bit dot there and come off that. So that just brightened up that a little bit. And then I will think of the next steps. So I wasn't going to work on this more today, but then I just kind of had an inspiration for some thoughts. So I decided to come in and I just did a couple defining lines because I kind of like the idea of that being a dove and a sun. And then I got to thinking it's coming up spring. So I drew a little plant life, just kind of a whimsical look and laid it down as a tracing. Um, so I wouldn't, I could do my designing on this rather than on the paper and then need to erase it or something. This gives me a little bit of that pondering what I want to do next. So I'm going to lay it down and you can tape it or I just have a piece, a um, little um, paper clip and I'm going to take my carbon paper and if you want to know how to do make your own carbon paper it's on my YouTube and you could see how to do that. But I'm just going to slide it under, make sure I'm lined up where I want to be and then I'm just going to trace over this real quick. I don't have to follow the lines exact because it's my design and I can change my mind on the way. But I'm going to do a real quick peek. Yep, it shows through. And I'm going to draw the, the plant. And then I'm going to give some thought of the next steps of what I want for color. So I'll talk about that. But I thought if I did this, then it would give me another element of layers. I talked about how I wanted this to be layered. And I'm going to show you how that line and why we're doing that line. It just takes a few minutes. This is much better, like I said, than erasing all your decision making on your paper itself. This is a better way to keep your paper fresh for your watercolor. And it doesn't have to be real dark. It just has to be dark enough for me to see. So it looks like I've done it. Take it off. And there we are. And then I can, t and this is very erasable. It's a very erasable kind of carbon. I'm going to just darken a couple places that I want a little bit darker for me to see over the lines. And then I'm going to come in. And the reason I did this line across is I'm going to divide the page one third, two thirds to all of these are going to show forward. And I'm going to put a dark color bit behind. And so it will be darker and then maybe to lighter and then I'll change something to the top so the area is a little more divided. So um, today you can see a little bit of the work I did off camera yesterday. I kind of started doing some pen work. You saw me trace it down and I just used a sharpie and did some of the thin and thick lines that I so like and came up and defined a few more lines across here. So what I'm going to do today is I'm actually going to surround so that these poke through. And Rick and I were talking the other night and talking about COVID-19 and being isolated. And he said, well, you have given the dove and the olive branch and almost like the ark, you know, the wood of the ark in Noah's Ark. And I thought, oh, well, that's kind of interesting. It just kind of came to those looks. And I thought that's very um, fun for a peaceful time coming out of isolation. So I'm going to write some words. We talked about how I was going to interplay some words through there. So sometimes I write them so that you can't really read them well but I know that they're in there. And remember we taught that SMIC word so that you can actually um, have interesting design. So I'm going to put the word hope in here. And I'll actually have that one be a little bit um, pronounced so that you can see it. But it's going to be kind of small. And it's going to be kind of light. So you might not even see it. I'll put it way up there. There, it's on that little black line. So hope and the, the TP fell kind of beneath, so that's okay. I can draw it down a little bit. Um, and then I will write some other words, and some of them I will kind of write so that you can't really tell. But I'm going to put new beginnings over here. New beginnings, um, new world. Uh, 
uh, peace. And tra I think I'll put tranquility. I like that word better. So they'll just be kind of non, almost non-distinguishable by the time I finish some of the other words. So I will put a number of them in there. Um, I would put the word faith. So for me, these, I'm going to make that one kind of messy. Some of these kind of just add to it with some little lines so that it just gives textural things. So I'm going to go with kind of the theme of this is a new beginnings, just like Noah's Ark was. And for you, you'll come up with all different kinds of ideas. You'll just discover sometimes things that start coming out in your design that you can play with and expand. So I'm going to come around now and let the foliage of the plant is the peek through. And the background is going to be blue. And one of the reasons I chose blue is because now we could say that that was the water beneath. So you've actually got the sun, plant, water. And however somebody would interpret this, they would still be able to have those colors represent those imagery. So I'm going to come up with, and I'm going so that the color that we put with all that design is still showing through. I'm using a pretty big brush. You could use a smaller one. I like the boldness of a big brush and for when I'm doing these demos it keeps you from having to watch me paint for hours. And that's why I did some of the pen work last night so that it would not be something that you had to watch every bit of it. Knowing too that I used a, a permanent Sharpie so it's not going to disturb when I come over with watercolor, hit one of those black or the words I just put in, they won't smear. So I'm going to come between here. Now you can see that's starting to pop out the foliage. In fact, if I go just a slight bit darker, and I can always come back and glaze over again so it shows more. I'm just kind of playing with how much I want to put in there. But I want to leave this space between. So I'll come down here and do a little bit more and come between here. And then I'm going to divide an area up here that becomes more of a plant life color up in this next section. So I'll do some green in there. So you have the sky, um, the sun, water, and plants. I'm going to just take and put plain water over here and go out to just a light glaze so that I don't have any hard edges and I will continue up around the corner a little bit. And I can always do more pen work, more layers as I continue. So far it's just watercolor with a little bit of pen. So it's got a, it is mixed media, but it's still mainly watercolor. I think right here I want to take a little bit of the yellow. It will make it green of course, because I've got some blue in my brush. But that will just give a shimmer off of my sphere up here and it will give a little bit more interest. See how that gave a little more de defining there. Now I'm going to rinse out really well. I'm going to use a little bit smaller brush and I'm going to come up and do that green area. Because I'm a limited palette I'm going to just grab the blue I'm already working with and add some yellow on the paper. I need more yellow. I'm going to add the yellow into it and it will make it the green, so it's mixed on the paper. That will be a little more interesting than if it were all one color. So there'll be some areas that will be a little more yellow as we surround. I've got to remember where I'm going here. I'm leaving that leaf void. And let's do a little more blue as it comes back here. It's a little more green. I think you can see that. So now we're doing this little compartment in here. And I've got to remember that's a leaf. This is the betweenst. It's a little tricky but it divides the space a little bit for more design. I'm going to do some more things up here. Still contemplating some of that. This would be blue in here. I missed that. So let's put the blue in there. A little bit more blue for more value. And I can throw some more words in there if I want to. I'm going to put a little more blue in here. As it dries it will get a little bit lighter. Okay, so now you can see 
I've surrounded in different ways. So up in this, that's part of the bird. So um, I think I'm going to do a light blue through that area too, and it will be divided with that green beneath. And again, I'm going to go around the plant life. This is going to be a little bit lighter blue, but I'm going to go around the plant life. When I come close to the plant life, I'm going to get a little darker so it will pop that variance there. So as I come up in here, I'll be a little bit darker. I could use a smaller brush, I guess. I'm just so used to using a big brush. Okay, so that's a little darker. I'm going to slide up here with some of the blue again, kind of getting into there. And all that texture that we put beneath is showing up now. And I think that's too dark of a blue. So I'm, it's too close to the other. So now I'm just going to take a damp brush that I have taken and have enough um, dryness to it that it will pick up a little bit. And then that will dry lighter yet. So here's what we're coming with. You can see all those little dots. I told you I like circles. We did little dots. That also gives a little bit to uh, match up with that honeycomb look. So, so far, um, it's coming along quite nicely. I think that down in this area here, I would like to do, while it's wet, I'm going to take a little bit of blue and just come in with some little lines. Can you see that? It'll diffuse out, and that will be uh, like a calming little... It could be water that are the waves, or it could be just a little calming line through there. But it would be because it's diffusing out because it's still damp there, it gives a design that is, is quite nice. And it's just going to be kind of melded in. Now, I could go darker if I like to later, but right now I just want to have it be kind of a suggestion. And these are paintings that you may have just for your personal experience. It might just be something that you did for the day to um, experiment and feel good about um, your painting and the day that you're having a calmness of painting. And um, they may come to be more um, important. I'm going to come up here and go just a little darker up in there. Whoops, I splattered a little bit. I'll take that out. So I just came and the brush kind of jumped. I will take and grab that out. It will just diffuse in that area a little bit. I could have waited till it was dry and then repaired it, but I don't mind that it's, it's kind of a floating color there, so I'm okay with a little bit of that. And I'm going to come back up in here and go a little dark. Then I'm going to let things dry because I'm going to need to let them dry so that I can come back in with any layers I want to without having it fade in like we did down here. Now you can see it's dry a little bit more so it will diffuse less. So now we have a multi-layered thin line that goes through. All right, so that's kind of how it's coming along so far. So I'm going to let that dry and I'll be back. Okay, that has dried and what I have done is you can see I've added some little more of the little circles and dots through things, put in some more words and did them kind of diffused and scribbly so they're kind of personal words. And now I'm going to come up and take care of this top area and I want to have it be a little darker over the sphere and then come uh, to a different tone and color over the side. So what I'm thinking is if I use quinacridone rust up in here, that'll be the orangish color that you've got inside the honeycomb look, and have that come across, and then it will continue across, and as it hits here, it'll go more of the sun color, but this is azo yellow, and I'm going to use nickel quinacridone gold, so it's going to be a little more golden brown. And so that I don't have it soak into the paper immediately, I'm just going to come with a very, very light amount of water so that I don't move any of the marks I have down before. But I'm just going to come over with a little bit of water over the whole area and if some of it moves around that's fine. Of course it's not going to disturb my pen because that's a permanent pen. And I'm just going to come so that that these as I bring these colors across they will 
kind of meld and diffuse into each other a little bit. I think I'm going to leave that area a little bit white, have a little break in there. All right, so I've got my nickel quinacridone, excuse me, quinacridone rust started here. You can see that's going to be a nice um, darker color to make it more defined. There we go. So I can put that across, and if I don't, you know, move too much, I won't move that woody. Remember that woody that is diffusible because it's a water soluble. So I'm going to come across, and at some point, I'm going to I'm going to sneak down in here, and at some point, I'm going to start moving to the nickel quinacridone gold. Know that I'm going to do it about the two thirds area because I don't want it half and half. So I'm getting close to the two thirds. I'll come down with a smaller brush in there here in a minute. It's going to lighten up, so I'm going to go a little bit darker. I want to just come to there. I'm going to grab another little brush and bring it down into the inside a little bit here so that I don't get rid of my little yellow jewels there. Okay, so I'm going to be right about there. And I, before this is dry over here, I'm going to bring just a little bit more of that quinacridone rust a little deeper because I think I want a little darker value to pop between the bottom of it being light and the top of it being a little more um, value driven with a little more dark. I can always do a glaze later, but since it wasn't dry, I could come there. Okay, so I'm two-thirds to the area, so now I'm going to grab the nickel quin gold, put it right in so it starts being a mix between. I'm even going to rock and roll it a little bit. Let's see if you can see it here. So that those two colors will merge a little bit. There we go. Okay, and then from here over, just do the nickel quin gold. And because that paint is dry underneath. That's our original watercolor that we did with the stencils and kind of the stencil brush. It's going to come over it without disturbing it. It's a dark color. It's kind of set in. It will hold. Okay. I have one spot here that I need to lift because it ran when I did the rock and roll. So I'm going to take and get a brush that's very clean and very thirsty, meaning it's dry, and come to that. All right, and I'm going to come just a little bit more over here so it goes dark, middle, light. And there'll be some finishing touches I'll do yet, but let's do a little bit of rock and roll there. See that? That really blends that well. So now we're getting some values. We're starting to see the imagery out a little bit more. Let's see if I can get this here for you to see it. See there? So you can actually start seeing more of the different individual pieces pop out. I will probably do a little bit more pen work, but um, that's, that's going to be pretty much the feel of the painting. So let me take back to my beginning thoughts for this. And they don't have to match up because it was just a start. All right, so what do I love? Nature. I've got nature in there. I'll just go from here to this. Um, circles, I got a lot of circles in there and dots. Lines, yes, I've got curvature lines, straight lines, thin, thick, using the pen. That gave me movement as well as the, the figure of the dove and all the individual pieces. Texture, the texture is a visual texture. I did from the very beginning that we came over and did the um, stamping and stenciling and printing um, so that you were able to have that textural look. We have hidden words. We talked about we probably wanted to put hidden words. Emotions. Okay, I wanted it to be kind of feeling the breath of fresh air. For me, it feels that way. And part of the way is because the dove comes through. And also these lines that we diffused in, the movement just gives me that there's air moving around and it's kind of soothing. Soothing was one of my words. Peaceful, calm. To me, there's a lot of busyness in there, but there's a calm feeling by the way that I've done the line and the you're moving around. Um, to me, it's happy um, and mindful. It's mindful of this time that I had an experience of being kind of um, secluded and um, not having as much interaction with, with other people. And it's kind of... Um, remembrance of that time. So I hope you enjoyed this. Come up with your own ideas. And I would say, 
come up with something that you love and just write a bunch of words down. You don't have to stay with all of them. I happen to. And then the emotions that you want to pull out on the piece. And these can be very personal. Um, you don't have to have these shared. I'm sharing it so that you can have ideas and, and have some hopefully breath of fresh air from what I've done. And I will just do some finishing touches and post at the very end of this video what its finish was. But most likely it's just going to be a little more pen work, a little more, I think I'm going to leave these light. I might have to go a little darker around them when it dries. But this, this will be close to its finished. So thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this and make a painting that would be a start of just play and watch how it develops. Enjoy.